So I've been working on this cleaver, got it almost done, and it involves a lot of decorative file work. And while I'm thinking about it, I want to give you all a quick intro to files, their selection, use, potential, and um, historical, historical precedent for file work. So this is a part of my collection of files. <laughs> and uh, you don't need this many files. You can do a lot of work with just a few. Um, but the more file work you do, the more likely you are to um, collect a few, shall we say. So most of the files I use are bastard cut, not mill bastard, but bastard cut. And bastard cut is one of the coarsest cuts of files. And bastard cut, let's see if you can see this, a bastard cut file is very coarse and it's double cut. So the lines are, don't just run one direction, it actually has lines running the other way too, which creates lots of little individual teeth. And bastard cut files remove material rapidly, but um, they al also can be used to get a pretty decent finish in many cases. Um, as nice a finish as you need in most cases. And uh, they work really, really good for everything from lots of finish work to lots of really coarse work where you need to move more material quickly. Although one of the basic principles of file work in relative to blacksmithing is the closer you can forge a piece to its finished state, the less file work you'll have to do. So anyway, if you're going to pick up a couple of files to start out, I highly recommend getting a um, 12 or 14 inch flat file and half round file. Um, and then a couple of square and round files in different sizes really, really are nice too. And it is, it's also nice to have a flat file with one safe edge and you can buy them like that. A safe edge is, is one edge is slick. So one edge has teeth and one edge is slick. Um, you can buy them like that or you can grind off one edge smooth. Just be sure and make it nice and smooth and square when you do that. So let's look at, let's look at um, what I do with these files and let's talk about the vise too. So this is a post vise. You can do file work in a lot of different kinds of vices but generally a good rule of thumb is that for most file work the vise should be set at elbow height. So if you stand straight the vise should come up to your elbow. This is pretty close. So we're going to put a piece of, this is just soft mild steel um, you can file high carbon steel and whatnot, but you should always make sure that what you're filing is soft or softened. So if you're working with tool steel, it needs to be annealed or softened before you file. So proper filing techniques involve practicing filing flat and straight. The tendency when filing with a normal flat stroke like this is to roll the file this way, which rounds the piece over. And you don't want that in most cases. In some you do. In some it's very intentional. And also you'll notice that I am lightly, not with pressure, but I'm lightly dragging the file back over the surface. Some people will tell you not to do that, but I believe that it is really, really beneficial because even though it might contribute to the dulling of the file, I don't really believe that it does very much. Um, what it does is it helps clear the chips out of the file. And um, you can rub chalk into a file to keep chips from sticking in the teeth. It's called pinning. Um, but even if you chalk the file, lightly dragging it back on the backstroke clears the chips. And that, that is really beneficial in most instances. So practice filing flat. Practice getting even looking surfaces. Um, but now let's do some let's do some decorative work. Let's do something a little fancier. And we can use the flat file for this, or we could use a half round. I'm gonna use a half round. Um, 
I'm going to cut in and do a wedding band decoration that is similar to what's on that cleaver project. It's making a lot of noise. This may not fix it, but then again, it might help. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna cut a groove in. I'm gonna cut another groove in. These will define the edges of the wedding band. So now that I've got these two grooves, I'll open, open this one up a little bit more. Now I'm going to start rolling the file as I go through the stroke. You can see that just rounds over that transition. And there you have it. That looks pretty decent just the way it is. But if I wanted to, I could go over it with a finer file to um, make the marks a little less coarse. So I'm switching to another double cut file. See, there's, there's the pinning I was talking about. Um, some, this, this file pins regardless of whether I drag it back or not. But this is a smooth cut file. And it leaves a little bit finer surface, a little finer tooth scratch pattern. And if I were doing this on round stock, I can just carry that motif, if you will. We'll do a very small version of it. Let's do this. I'm actually going to do a double groove this time. So this is going to be a wedding band with two little sharp rings on each side, one on each side. So I'm going to round that over and then in order to carry these bands around you want to run your file back and forth and just move it around just a little bit at a time it's much easier to use what's already there as the guide than it is to try to start in a new position and carry it through This way I'm able to do a little bit at a time and make sure that everything stays lined up and true. And then I'll come back this side towards me. So you can see how I'm, I'm rolling my wrist to roll the file as I make the stroke. And that's how the bead gets rounded over. So now I'm just making strokes where I move around the piece. The strokes are fairly light. And this is removing all the little facets left behind from the rolling strokes, the strokes that roll the other way. It's hard to describe, but hopefully you can see what's happening there. And this can also be done, well, let's, let's do this first. So now I'm going to roll this. Blend this in. So 
So another way to accomplish these smoothing strokes is to roll the piece with your hand while you're also moving the file. And there you have it. And so this can be done a quarter at a time, a quarter of the radius at a time, and you can just chase the pattern all the way around the piece. So one more filing technique I want to show is what is called draw filing. And draw filing can be done with a bastard cut file, although I will often switch to a single cut file. A mill bastard is a single cut file. Uh, let's see, we'll go with this one. And a single cut file is one that has the teeth just simply cut in lines running one direction. There's not the teeth, the lines running the other direction. And draw filing, draw filing leaves a really nice um, smooth surface and it also um, it also can be used to really flatten things out. So since you're, you're simply drawing the file towards yourself this way, it's very easy to keep the file flat on this axis, which means you can get a very flat surface. It's kind of like planing. You can see the scratches from the bastard cut going across the piece disappearing. So once again, the file only cuts in one direction. In this case, um, I've got the tang of the file to my left, so pulling it towards me is what does the actual cutting. But I'm, I'm going to lightly run it back and forth because that will help clear the chips. You can see those perpendicular lines just disappearing, and we're getting a nice um, even pattern of long small scratches. You can turn it around if you need to so that the cutting is done on the push stroke. There you go, that's draw filing. So this is really good for um, when you want a really nice looking surface, but it's also good for bearing surfaces and moving parts. If you have a part that slides this makes a really nice bearing surface. So now let's go over here and let's look at some of the things, both old and new, that files, that I've used files on or somebody else used a file on. So I'm going to lay out a couple files here. So we're talking about draw filing. This is a door bolt that I made. If you can go back in the channel and see um, our video series on making this bolt. And this is an example of draw filing being used to finish a moving part. So this bolt slides in those staples and the draw filing gives it a nice bearing surface. This is an antique door bolt. Um, I believe it was made in France, and this door bolt, while it's left with a raw forged finish on the back side where it's not going to be seen, the face of this door bolt was completely filed to finish. And part of the bolt was, the, the business end was draw filed, and this whole section here, the stem, was draw filed, as was this knob right here. The face of this knob was draw, draw filed. And all of these decorations and uh, things on the whole piece it was all done with files. This is what's left of about a 200 year old spatula. It's been worn down to nothing. But this is another piece. This was forged and then finished with files and it was completely bright when it was done. Recognize this little decoration here. This is what we just got done demonstrating. You can see that goes all the way around. And often, if you look really, really close, if you carefully clean a piece, 
and you can sometimes still see the uh, file marks in those decorations. This is another piece. This is a this is an old, I have no idea how old it is, but this is an old um, chest handle. And most of the piece was filed completely bright. And again, you can see these decorations. This is also filed in an octagon. But they didn't carry the motif all the way around the back side where it wouldn't be seen. There's no real reason to, so they didn't bother. But it's very visible on the face. This is another example. This is a piece that I made. Um, it's also fairly common in a lot of history to see pieces that have um, some areas, some bright areas and some black areas, black being the forged finish. So you can see how this has a, a filed handle and I filed the, uh, fa the top surface of the thumb press and filed some decorative edges and stuff, but they're still forged surfaces. And then these are tools. These are tools that were also forged, hand forged. Each piece was hand forged and then filed to finish. So these little compasses and dividers were um, all filed bright to finish. And you basically just use whatever file you need to get into different areas, um, different shapes. So round files or half round files um, in whatever radius you need to fit in, to do an inside curve, a radius, and then a square edged file. Often the safe edge, um, a safe edge on a file will give you the best inside corner, crispest inside corner. So there's, there's a sharp inside corner right there where you would need that sharp corner on a file to finish it out. And finally, we're back to the cleaver. Most of the file work is in the handle, although I did file off the spine. I filed this little decoration in here. And there are chamfers to break the sharp edges, some of them. And then this. This was forged really, really close and then finished with files. So I used heavy bastard cut files to do the rough work to get it down close, um, and then a finer double cut smooth file to give my finished surface. And then um, a small round file, like a chainsaw file for doing small tight inside radii, and flat files or half round files to do the outside radius. And the sharp edge of either a square file or uh, basically any file with a sharp edge or a half round to make incised cuts. Sometimes I do have to grab a small, small delicate file for a small delicate detail or to get inside a tight hole or whatever. So that's where jeweler's files in different sizes and shapes can really come in handy. So hopefully that gives you a good introduction to files and file work. Um, the only other thing I'd like to cover is where to get your files. I have had good luck finding used files at uh, yard sales, flea markets, eBay, etc. Um, but it's best to get brand new files. And some of, the, some of the, the new files on the market now are good and some of them aren't. If you get basically any European made new file, you'll probably do pretty well. There are brands like Karate from Italy. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time with some of the others, but there are some German ones, uh, Ferd, P-F-E-R-D. They make good files. And then also um, new old stock, American or Swiss or European made files on eBay are a great source. Again, I would stick to bastard cut files in many different sizes, but starting with a 12 or 14 inch, um, you know, half round and flat file for most of your work on down. I use eight inch files a lot and six inch files occasionally. So if you just get a half round and flat, round and square, 
in all of the different sizes <laughs> in a bastard cut, then you'll have a really, really good collection. But you certainly don't need a lot of files um, for most of the file work that you'll do. So good luck with your filing. Don't be scared to file. And um, look at colonial or earlier um, original pieces of ironwork to see to see how files were used and uh, remember to forge close and then file to finish and like I said look look to the historical stuff for inspiration on how files can be used and you'll I think you'll really be happy if you practice file work and you get into it you'll really be happy with the results that you can achieve with files that you really can't get with any other tool. Files are pretty awesome.